Hello and welcome to the 150th episode of Pulp Kitchen. James, pleasure. Well done, mate. 150 times. Three years. We were saying uh, off air that we, we really haven't actually had a moment to catch no. our breath and process the fact. Not that because is. we don't love to celebrate or recognise the hard work. More just it is a bit mad at the moment. And yeah. every, I mean, so many times during the show, it's like, well, we've got the next episode. The next episode's coming in hot yeah. and fast every single time. No breaks. There is no breaks. And there are lots of like big films happening at the yeah. moment. And we were also saying off air that when we started this show in October 2021, there were just far fewer films in the film calendar because of yes. COVID, the overhang of COVID. And then 2022, a few more films. 2023 picked up, but then you had the strikes as well, a bit of a knock-on effect on that. And this year, 2024, feels like, it's I bigger. want to say, the first big proper film is since 2019. And not just releases, it's like the from the other side of it, the PR activation spend from all the other companies that yeah. are covering the films for the big studios. Like You feel that ramping up and also to be frank we've we've increased in size and people are offering us opportunities to cover films and turn up at premieres which also adds to our calendar yeah um and yeah like here we are quit your job at the start of the year which is really exciting very exciting i love it i've actually loved spending so much time with you (laughs) on you um uh, james and the audience no it's uh, yeah I, i you know this is it i all in and it's great and um We've had, I, I'm very happy. I mean, we have, the growth, it, 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 look, it, the thing is, it's still basically- It's still, a ba- it's still such a baby of ours. It's still also surreal in a way that we've grown because yeah. we are nobodies who just decided to do a podcast and just for us another, to get an audience. Another couple of guys. Just another couple of guys. And we have got a following. The fact that we even have listeners to talk to, we have people to come to, you know, events is- crazy Some and really cool interviews hopefully coming up with yeah great people. real you know the bigger we get the more material uh, <laughs> that's somebody now it's Clooney. He wants oh to know my why, god <laughs> he wants to know why we didn't like wolves <laughs> um and you know material things more and more things happen as we get bigger which is which, which is great but wow and like yeah you could look you talk about numbers you talk about like you know being able to do it as a job but mainly it's like the the proof of concept of the idea working is probably one of the most satisfying yeah. things it's like yes like this thing that we really want to do that really interests us about a subject we're really passionate about mm. um and that fact that people also resonate with that is like the coolest feeling it is yeah it's it's really wonderful and you know we want to do something special for to mark the occasion mm-hmm. uh we almost let Did it go nothing. by. We almost let it go by and we thought, no, no, we need to do something. So this is going to be a slightly different episode in that we are going to play voice notes that you guys have sent in. We put a bit of a call out, a bit of a last minute call out, yeah. um, partially my fault, um, <laughs> about people to send in their voice notes mm-hmm. to, to, to ask us questions. And we've got a couple of them, a uh, few of them to play today. Mm-hmm. And we're going to do that. It's a really nice thing we did for our 100th. Mm. And I like that it's back. It's like you actually get to, you know, you hear from us all year. Yeah, but, but it's, it's nice to hear from people and to put put a voice to the name put a, for some yeah, people. Yeah, no, that's right, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so that's going to be fun. But James, any other reflections? I'm sure I'm sure we will reflect more as we barrel into these voice notes. But yeah, before we crack on to reflect more, it's the it's like there are times I think when yes, things can be tiring with all the all the many different things we have to do with the show. Yeah. And it is still just James and I, like we are, you know, yeah. I mean, we, we, obviously we've had some growth and we, we are represented by an agency who do support us with a lot of things, but the essential production of the show Every is minute of footage edited is done by us. Yeah. Every image, everything, every event. But however tired we are and however exhausted, we are still very thankful and lucky and happy. And like, mm. you know, it, I can sometimes turn up to record and feel like I am deflated Exhausted. or tired, but then yeah. you re- it energizes us and we yeah. switch on. And even if you have to schlep to a random part of London to watch a screening mm. in the pouring rain, <laughs> um, it's always worth it. And also it. it's just lovely to have an outlet an outlet to cover something you're really interested in and be like, oh, I saw that film, I can't wait yeah. to discuss it with an audience, discuss it with you. Mm unpack yeah. it and then that that opinion evolves over the weeks mm. and like we touch back yeah. on things there's different films you go yeah well i think i've now seen that twice that's different mm. or someone says something that i didn't think of it's all very interesting I, it's also um like the other week when my old school friend i went to school with who emailed in and said that oh you know i'm so glad that the your, your love of film has translated it's made me realize doing this show that oh yeah i've been talking about film like all my life yeah. like just <laughs> yapping guys so it's like it makes total sense that i'm doing this and it's yeah. therefore so really really fulfilling yeah. that people have responded to us both yeah. um having a chat which is great um 
but it's fun. And let's go have some fun. Let's, let's, let's play it. some voice notes. Let's hear what people have to say. And let's answer some questions. So as always, guys, you can uh, send in your standard emails to hello at popkitchenpodcast.com. But for today, they are voice notes. And our first voice note comes from none other friend of the show, Sam. Sam voices in with the following. Hi, hi, lads. Sam here. Um, I was at your live show earlier this year and actually came up on stage and I got a question wrong about the Beetlejuice film coming out this year. I answered Nosferatu instead. Uh, but I have got a question for you as well. I went to see The Substance last week. Loved it. Thought it was fantastic. One of my own. Um, wanted to find out some recommendations of films that people could watch, sort of lighter versions of body horror films that might be a good way for them to get into the genre without being fully immersed in the these quite intense films themselves. Uh, it'd be great to get my partner and other people who are not quite into that sort of thing to get an idea of how good these films can be. Anyway, thanks as always. Cheers. Thank you, Sam. Sam thank you very much. Sounded like you were recording that in a fridge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, in, in a laundrette, maybe? Yeah, true, true. <laughs> yeah. Watching the clothes spin around. No, very, um, very clear voice. Thank you. Very, thank you very much for your voice. Now, I would say body horror, which is a genre that's kind of not always popping through the mainstream. The yeah. substance is the most recent one. The king of body horror is David Cronenberg. And yeah. if you want to watch a good mainstream body horror movie, mm. watch The Fly with Jeff Goldblum oh, yeah. and Gina Davis from 1986, which has gooey, nasty body horror stuff, mm. cross, you know, crossbred with a fly, but palatable enough to be mainstream and for it to be a hit. Yeah. I mean, I cited it in the review, but Black Swan, I think, is brilliant. Actually, Ooh, yeah. I think a more complete type of film i much prefer black swan and i think we said it to the substance, ends, to the yeah. substance and i think it ends in a way that really i think puts a bow on that film mm. in a wonderful way and it's <laughs> it's pretty gross but it's nowhere yeah. near as bad as the substance no 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 um similarly like birdman has a lot of that in there like the transformation of the feathers and oh him, right. like, i don't remember that really. it's, a bit, it's a bit of a body horror in there because he's got his like aging saggy body Oh. And there's all of that. It's a lot of different things, Birdman, but there definitely is that there. Oh, I forgot that. I mean, I, yeah, I thought also, um, it's only like one scene, but like, I think of body horror as like that old use of like practical effects and things like yeah. that. And like in, in the first Terminator, when he's operating on himself with the scalpel, and he's cutting his eye out. Yeah. Like, and you've got the machine eye underneath and he's peeling back the skin on his arm and it's showing the, the wiring underneath. That's all very alien. <laughs> Yeah. Alien, told you, a thing growing inside you that uh, splashes yeah, out. A horror comes from within you. That's yeah. like very classic and much more palatable. Than, uh, yes, we're not describing like things bursting out of chest as more palatable <laughs> than the substance, but it really is. I mean, it is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. Oh, the substance. We, yeah, it's uh, that's a movie. That's yeah. really there. Um, I would say I think that's a good start point. The, the Revenant. Fly. Body like, horror? Less so, but he's, he's, he's wrangling his body across that landscape through the snow. He stitches Requiem, for yeah. Requiem for a dream. Yeah. Requiem for a dream is actually like, because it's got body, like it's got needles and pus and infected arms and like sexual exploitation in it. And it's yeah. relentless, but it's also used quite infrequently and, and, and like only towards the end. I'd say I'd say Reckon for a Dream, actually. I, rec I rec Reckon for a Dream on the Fly. Sam, thank you for your message. And yes, of course, we remember you. Remember your moment on stage. Thank you, as always, for coming to the quiz. Knees weak, palms are heavy. No. Knees weak, palms are heavy. Palms are sweaty. Knees weak, palms, palms are sweaty. sweaty. He There's tried to answer the question about Beetlejuice. He got it wrong already. Oh, yeah, very good. Uh, this you. next one is from friend of the show, Harry. Uh, hello, gents. Big fan. Long time, first time. Um, with a certain US election coming up next month, I would love to know who your favourite world leaders are from films and television. Um, we're talking prime ministers, presidents, kings, queens, and ev everything in, in between, I guess. Um, yeah, love the show. Thanks. Oh, interesting question. Good question. Favourite world leaders on... Well, obviously, you've got Harrison Ford in Air Force One, which I'm desperate to rewatch because it seems like such a serviceable thriller. Um, you've got um, Hugh Grant in... Love actually. Oh yeah, iconic. Yeah, and and Billy Standing Bob Thornton is the, the US. Maybe yeah, a friend who bullies us. And also kind of accurate because it's like the Blair era, and it's kind yeah, of like really not was. too distant relative of that. Um, Bill Pullman as the president in Independence Day. Yeah, you know, we're going to live on. We're going to no, that's we're gonna what, how Irish have you gone there? Like, <laughs> oh, I'm Bill Pullman. Today, I'm the president of the United States. It's our Independence Day today. Yeah, he's got and then the sequel. They're coming back. I see them. In my dreams. Yeah, no one saw that movie. Yeah, I did. I think. I think. Um, yeah, that's quite. Those are quite good world leaders. Only kings and quite royalty. I'm trying to think of These fictional ones specifically. Yeah. The Denethor, the steward of Gondor. He's fun. It's horrible. 
and he eats that chicken and that the tomatoes, they're all getting killed. Um, Tilda like, Swinton. Sing me a song. Do you not sing songs in your thing? And then Pippa's like, I only sing songs in happy times. <laughs> Sing me a song. Um, Tilda Swinton as the Ice Queen in Narnia. Yeah, she's having fun. Yeah, she's good. She's great. Ice yeah. Queen in that. Um, I think that's. I think, but back to political world leaders. I think I. I, I feel like my brain's pulling me towards things like, um, was it Angel Has Fallen and, and and London Has Fallen? Oh yeah. Did you know they made a Paris Has Fallen? And literally the poster was like the next series, the next film in the Has Fallen series. Like you can't <laughs> call it the Has Fallen. <laughs> the has Fallen. How are we doing with the Has Fallen trilogy? My favorite yeah. Has Fallen film is Olympus. I'd like to give a shout out to um, Prince Ramesses and the Kings of Egypt. Ah. Very dramatic. One of the best underrated musicals, I'd say. Is Prince it a musical? Egypt. Yeah. I haven't seen it in such a long time. I, I remember will liking not it. Let your people got an amazing cast. Val Kilmer, Michelle Pfeiffer, Adrian Brody. Really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. I need to rewatch that. that, that oh, was, it's really good. Yeah, Prince of Egypt's really good. Mm, really oh, the, 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 because I have a voice in the King's Speech. Oh, King yeah, Colin George the Sixth. King, that is, yeah, well done. Yeah, yeah that's it, right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have a voice. Yes, you do. He's very good in that. Good scene in that. By the way, that was yeah. my when I went on Scene Stealers, which is Henry Cal friend of the show, Henry Calvin's yeah. podcast. They were like, oh, what film that isn't a musical do you think would be a great musical? And I said the King's Speech. Because you've got yeah. the My Fair Lady Pygmalion oh, dynamic yeah. of like trying to pronounce yeah. things. <clears throat> and then you've got like the the final moment in the end when he mm. makes the speech that we're going toward. That could be like an epic musical number. But he made it into a play as well. But there was a play I'm after sure. the film with the guy who plays Keller Brimble in Rings of Power. Oh, great. And nice. then, uh, oh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that was my choice. We're going to war. Oh. <laughs> it's like, and it's like um, not the rain in Spain. He's like, uh, you can do all the tongue twisters. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Thistle, it's my fair oh, lady. No, 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 yeah, no. yeah, yeah. And you do a, a whole sequence sifter. with that. I'm a thistle oh, sifter. I'm a sifter, 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 yeah. sifter um, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that, Harry. This next one is from friend, devoted friend of the show, Emily. Hi, George and James, James and George. Congratulations on 150 episodes of Pulp Kitchen. My question is, have you ever recommended a film that you know is perfect for someone's tastes right up their street, their cup of tea, and they've not liked it? I recommended Shutter Island to my mum because she loves suspenseful thriller, horror, period drama. So I was thinking, well, this ticks all of the boxes. And then I watched it with her, the credits rolled, and she turned to me and said it was the worst film she'd ever seen. I was completely baffled. I didn't get it. Um, and I was wondering if this has ever happened to you. Um, yeah, congratulations on the success of the podcast, Double Take and Discord. Like, we all love it. So, thank you. Thank, thank you, you Emily. Thank, thank you so, so much. much. Um, that was weirdly insane. <laughs> <laughs> we just did that. Thank you so much. Um, first of all, like, it's one thing to not like Shutter Island, but it's not the worst film no, of all time. No, we've seen that, and that was Megalopolis. <laughs> Nothing will ever be as <laughs> Nothing. bad as Megalopolis. Yeah. Um, I like you, Shutter Island fan. I've only seen it once. Yeah. So again, I need, I need you've, it, you've it mentioned it a couple of times, and I yeah, forget I things like- It's a bit of a dark horse of a film. It's very, mm. very overdramatic, but I actually think it's kind mm. of great. Uh, I, a recent you, example, yeah. I showed, I put All of Us Strangers on for Anna and I. She missed uh, it when it came out yeah. in the cinema. And I was looking forward to watching it again, uh, despite it being such an emotionally heavy film. Put it on, and um, it did not move her a bit. She what? was cold. <laughs> I didn't know this. Uh, yeah, uh, she she probably wouldn't like me telling this story, but um, she was baffled in herself yeah. when it got to the end of the the film. She kind of thought, and, I, and like you know, it's kind of like, you know the power. I was like, wow. I put it off. I, was, I turned it off, wow. and I was like, yeah. Uh, and she was like, yep. Cool. What, what do you want to do? And I was like, what do you mean? What do you, do you I was just like, yeah, I, I, no. Do you not want to cry for 40 yeah. minutes? She's <laughs> like, mm, nope. And um, I, uh, she, she likes Paul Meskel. She likes Andrew Scott. Yeah. And she likes the cast. It, it, she, ingredient by ingredient, everything she would like. And it just left her cold. I have a watching feeling it it's watching yeah. it at home. I think yeah. seeing it in the cinema is a much more powerful experience. Yeah. It's not the kind of, you really kind of want to be very wrapped into that world because it's so strange. It works. The whole premise works. Yeah. But because it's so strange, um, you need to be really fully enveloped. And that was quite sad because I was ready to be like, I know, right? But she was just like, yeah, I'm done. And I was like, lunch? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I recommended, and I think I appropriately recommended someone to watch The Iron Claw, which is a film we reviewed yes. and had like, you know, mixed thoughts about it. But ultimately I was like, you know what? I actually think this is a really heartfelt story and I think it ends well. And there's a really sort of, 
you know, <laughs> it's, it's a really difficult story to catch, but I, I, someone's like, should I see it? And I was like, yeah, I think it's worth seeing. And this guy like came back to me and he was like, oh, I thought it was absolutely rubbish, completely missed the point, didn't oh. get to me at all. And I was like, it didn't get to you at all. Uh. You know, it's a real story. Yeah. And it was more shocking than they actually yeah, yeah. showed in the film. And he was just like, nothing at all. And then another one is, which I feel I think I'm guilty of overhyping is Hitman. Because oh, I saw that yeah. in a perfect audience at yeah. the London Film Festival and it was... Just something about it I thought was so great. And then you were just like, what? I didn't Sorry, get it mate. at all. Yeah. Like, not at all. Uh, and then to, to this day, I think our most, in terms of email, we've got so many emails about it and divisive. they were either one way or the other. Mm. Um, so I'm not surprised it sort of split people slightly. But yeah, we just didn't. The Iron Claw. The same way. It's one of those, again, almost a good film. Like the Bike Riders. Yeah. Could have, I think the Iron Claw is better than the Bike Riders, but it's like almost a good film. It's very, I'd lo- I'd lo- I look at it, it's prestigious. Got, I'd love to go, I like the, bike oh, riders, yeah. the Iron Claw, great. I go, yeah, d- yeah, almost, almost there. Bike riders need to like, uh, it's got really good bones. It needs more to happen. It, <laughs> it just needs more to happen. <laughs> yeah, totally. But it needs like, it just needs the next chapter, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen, have you seen bike riders? You know, we've, you yeah, kind of know, know what I mean. Uh, thank you very much, Emily. This next one is from Joseph. G'day, George and James. It is Joe here from Hobart, Tasmania, calling in once again. I'm just going to ask a question. Uh, since you're both have an incredibly great sense of fashion and you for some reason have so many different clothes there's almost not an episode where you both wear the same clothes as you want in other episodes um that sounds a bit weird but whatever um i was going to ask if you could wear one piece of clothing from any film or tv show what would it be and why um whether it's whether you wear it just because it looks cool or because it's practical or anything like that not sure um, but I'm thinking like Marty McFly's shoes or I'm thinking, uh, maybe something from the talented Mr. Ripley. Don't know. What are your thoughts? Love you guys. Thanks for being such great entertainment and making such an incredible podcast to listen to. Uh, much love. Great question. Thank you. First from, of all, thank jo- you very from, much. From Joseph? From Joseph. Joseph, first of all, thank you. Great. And very, like, a great tone you have to your voice. Like you I'm, getting a bit a of, I'm getting yeah. a little bit of Heath Ledger in. Ted, yeah. Ted <laughs> things ahead about you being yeah. like, hi, maybe I yeah, uh, have a little conversation with you. Really like to um, also, Hobart, like, the, that's the bottommost, the, the bottommost, like, you know, I'm literally the other end of the pl- pl- planet, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. Hey. Um, first of all, we do we do wear the same clothes. We do repeat. We do repeat outfits. We are, like, what a very cool perk of doing the show is that sometimes brand sends us clothes, which is Sometimes really we can nice. be gifted, yeah, which, which is, is really, really a real, cool. A real, and actually, only particularly this year, actually. That's only happened this year, starting yeah. to happen, which has been Guys, really... Guys, click on the video to see the funky shirts. Sure. Absolutely. Um, uh, great question, Joseph. Yeah. I would say two two answers. Obviously, you said Tan to Mr. Ripley. Jude Law's double-breasted <laughs> navy linen suit with the... <laughs> specifically, <laughs> the, the pork pie, I think, hat maybe he... I don't know what type of hat he yeah. wears when they go to Milan, I want to say. Looks fantastic. Yeah. If not that... James Dean's red Harrington jacket that he wears. Love a rebel with whatever that costs. Yeah. Oh, I love a jacket. Yeah. Even though Harrington jackets can be a little bit too cropped for me now because I'm tall. Yeah. If it's cropped, it means the sleeves are not usually long enough. It's hard to get a good fit. But yeah. I would say that, yeah. Ryan Gosling's jacket in Blade Runner 2049. Oh, it's like a purposely yeah. so uneven, yeah. shearling coat that looks mm. like it's just been ripped from some sort of like shearling tent and he's mm. placed it over him fits perfectly mm. in, a, in another sort of idealized version of myself i'd go through the misty city and get some noodles and mm. sit alone and glare at my villains mm. uh, and then also just just a, a St- aragon's outfit particularly in the fellowship <laughs> of the ring strider's outfit when he's walking with the hobbits around weathertop and it's just the perfect mix of style and utility and it's like a lightweight fabric that you could get dirty and wash in a stream. And I just think if, if we didn't have society, I'd dress like that every day. Mm. Some sort of cape, obviously a massive sword, blades, and like a, a belt. Bat- basically like a sort of, a sort of clothy Batman. Um, Joaquin Phoenix's character in Her. Oh, he dresses brilliantly. Lovely yeah, red pastels. linen collarless shirt with high-waisted trousers, yeah. um, beautiful framed glasses. Uh, yeah, love that. And in fact, the whole style of that movie, whoa, everyone's Sorry, like kicking off. Um, yeah, I would say that. that that's, uh, there are lots of stylish movies, but... Oh, actually, uh, I mean, this is quite easy to do, but like mm. in Call Me By Your Name, I, I like some big overhanging baggy shirts with the kind of multicolored shorts. Yeah, mm. I'd one day like to do the gold finger suit, mm. the white yeah. one. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like it would just be nice to do that without it being overly 
derivative yeah. of that. I feel like Craig had a nice white suit inspector. Mm. Yeah, he, mm, yes. I think actually any sort of like suited thing, like even the Great Gatsby, like yeah. Leo in that looked great. Yeah. Tom Ford dresses Bond in, in good Craig A single Bond. man. That's very well. Oh, single man. I mean, obviously the gorgeous Italian lapel with yeah. the pointy things, with the broad, the broad shoulders that brings it down. Yeah. The heck, oh, really, really sort of the on. 1960s California acad academic Talent look. Back to talented. But like, you know, talented is trivia. I totally agree with you, but it's like, it's so attainable. Like you could fashion yourself a suit yeah. like that. Whereas yeah. Marty McFly's MagSafe. Yeah, sure. you can actually buy them for about 30 grand, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like uh, yeah, impossible yeah. clothing. Oh, I see. Yeah, you want stuff that like is 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 fictional clothing. Yeah, almost. kind of. Because mm. there's like there's like tech in tech clothing, like the tuxedo in mm. Jackie Chan's tuxedo <laughs> <laughs> gives you special powers. Yeah, I, mean, I think it would be amazing to like you know there's actors that screen test for Batman mm. and they'll wear like Val Kilmer's bat suit to screen right. test in, or they'll wear like mm. the Christian Bale one. Like I just think that would be amazing to get, not in like a sort of budget costume shop one, sure, like a proper sure. yeah. fiber rubber weave suit and just for what just for one day you look in the mirror and you go because i am <laughs> because i'm Batman. uh thank you so much for your question this next one thank you so much for your question this next one question is Gina. From, <laughs> question. Thank you for your question julian is from fiorella whoa, whoa, whoa. this next one is from fiorella hi george and james um i'm fiorella um i'm uh, I'm from the U.S. Um, I'm a college student and I became a recent fan. I'm part of your Patreon and I just want to say you guys are literally so incredible. I love your podcast. I wake up every morning and get so excited when I see a posting. So um, it's just great to hear you guys review these really great movies and just hear your opinions. Um, so yeah, I'm a movie fanatic. So this is like everything to me. Um, but yeah, uh, my question for the week would be, um, what is the greatest family movie, in your opinion? I feel like there's so many great movies, and I think it really sometimes depends on the season. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to hear your opinions on that. Um, and my second one is, if you guys have watched the Eric and Lyle Menendez story, the new show on Netflix, just wanted to hear your review on it, because there's a bit of controversy on that show. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Fiorella. Great to hear from you. And thank you for your kind words thank too. You like, so much. I, it's, it's nice. This is why we're doing it for our 150th episode. I really like it. I really, yeah, really like it. Yeah, it's like really nice to hear like warm, uh, warm feedback. That's, that's so kind of you too. What's the first question again? Uh, it was best family movie. Family, best family movie. Yes, I, I, would, I would say two answers for this. Either, for reasons I've already spoken about on the show before, either School of Rock, yeah. which is just great, accessible. You could enjoy it from a, if you're a child, you can enjoy it from the child's point of view yeah. or, or from, as an adult from the adult's point of view. Really Really wonderful and similarly for similar reasons recently watched it the parent trap great family movie i think parent you trap are the guess. genius of the parent trap is just getting you on the ground level from the kids point of view but their kids are so smart they're almost smarter than the parents in a way it's almost like a role reversal where instead of meddling parents trying to set up their children to get you know get married it's the other way around it's yeah. just like so infectious and warm so uh i think those are like the great family movies yeah i agree on both of those parent trap is brilliant yeah it's so so brilliant i'm gonna put mrs doubtfire up there as a mm. really great family movie because it's funny for everyone it's sad for everyone mm. and i think for kids it allows you to sort of peek into a complex yeah. adult divorce without sort of getting into the nitty-gritty yes. i think anytime i think um films allow children to uh, understand a more grown up mm. nuanced concept but th still through an age appropriate lens I always think is a really difficult thing to do have, I, have I you seen the stuff online which is like if you were to tell Mrs. Doubtfire from the wife's point of view it's a horror movie her <laughs> ex-husband <laughs> is really disguising is. himself and sneaking <laughs> into totally her is. home um, but what I love about Mrs. Doubtfire this is a minor uh, this is a kind of a it's about the ending but I think most people have seen mm. Mrs. Doubtfire and I don't think this is a spoiler really but what I like is at the end of Mrs. Doubtfire, you know, the parents don't get back together. No, yeah. They're not reconciled. They are getting a divorce. Yeah. But it's just about kind of working through that. And I loved it. I watched it mature recently. Ending. Yeah, really yeah. mature. And you understand. Because what he does is unforgivable, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> what he does is you'd have a restraining order. <laughs> if they wanted to take their divorce to court, a judge would not take kindly to that behavior. Uh, <laughs> the, the also, the house that they live in. Oh, in so idyllic. In, San Francisco. In, yeah, in San Francisco is great. It's huge. So huge. Huge. San Francisco is for a voiceover artist, of any artist and, yeah. and she's an architect. That was it. Yeah, um, it's a different time. Different time. <laughs> rents were cheap. Rent stabilized. That economy. is now fourteen flats. That house. Great, again, great Pierce, Pierce Brosnan. Yes, Stu, Stu. 
is my Mercedes Benz. Help us on the way, dear. <laughs> he does. He like dives. Oh so yeah, this is Stuart. Uh, great question. Great what was question. the second question? Oh, about the Menendez brothers uh, stuff. No, sorry, I've I haven't seen watched it. it. Heard a lot about it. I know the case. I, I've, I've read about the case before. I'm a bit Ryan Murphy'd out a little bit at the moment. You know, Ryan Murphy does a lot of things, and I, I haven't seen American Horror Story, and like I think it was. I hope I've got this right. I think Ryan Murphy was the one who did American Crime Story as well. And uh, I think I'm, I'm American, American Crime Story, which was OJ, then Gianni Versace, and then the right. Bill Clinton one. And I'm like, the OJ one was great, but that's because the OJ story is so, uh, the, 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 the dramatic bones of that story are so incredible that mm. you can do anything with that. But the other ones, it just made me think, I don't really like this kind of very melodramatic, over the top, mm. slightly brash taking of a real life tragedy and real life, Dark strange. stuff, and then whipping it up into like really hyper bingeable Netflix content, which yeah. is what they did with Jeffrey Dahmer and and this one. So I don't know. I know it's getting popular. I just I I haven't seen the show. Maybe it's a bit no. more respectful. Maybe it's a bit more in depth. I I'm not getting that impression. Always with these, always with these series. Every single time, the pe real people involved in it come out and say, "Hey, that's not accurate." I saw it play on my like auto scroll on the Netflix, and I was like, "It kind of looks interesting," but I was gonna. Wait. I hadn't heard amazing things. I would wait until other people recommend it to me, and I've not had people shake me and go. I hey. should watch it, but that's where I'm sitting with it at the moment. Thank you so much for your voice note. This next one is from friend of the show, Anthony. My question is, when you guys inevitably hit the big time and they recreate the story of Pop Kitchen on the big screen, which actors from any era would you want to play the lead roles of George and James in the movie? From any era? Any era. Yeah. We've sort of answered this before. Of who, would, if who would play you in a movie, yeah. Oh, don't you dare. I know what you're going to say. You're <laughs> such a bastard. Your answer was so... <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. I on. aspirationally said uh, uh, Robert Pattinson or Ashton Kutcher. Obviously, that's paying mm. myself a mm. massive compliment. Mm, did and you? I said Willem Dafoe at a different stage of my life. <laughs> um, I think... I think in reality, if someone was to realistically do one of us, one of us would probably be played by like Thomas Brody Sangster. Oh yeah, yeah like yeah. it's the same I can see sort that. of era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but dream scenario, you know, in any era. Well, obviously, Brando Jude Law. <laughs> Jude Law in his, in his prime. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, and that, oh, but I, I say Ashton Kutcher. That's a compliment. No, I was <laughs> laughing at that because you called me Peter Capaldi one time. Yeah, um, uh, yeah I, I don't know. I mean, in terms of, I suppose it's like people you want to look like or is it good actors you want to do a good job with yeah. your life so maybe like a young uh i see like the sort of british asa butterfield and thomas Brody sangster kind of thing mm. Mm. not amazing for likeness but it's there. sam claflin yeah sam claflin yeah, yeah. and robert pattinson harris dickinson harris Di harris dickinson yeah, yeah. so and right josh o'connor yeah, you know, yeah that yeah. kind of it, selection of people sort of more our age really mm. can put place them in time you could be a bit mike feisty if you grew his hair out yeah yeah i could i could get mike feisty um yeah. could blonde it up obviously chalamet but no we, <laughs> this is the va the vain side of answering that yeah. question is like who do you want to look good in you but if you want to do someone a good actor to do a good job i mean mm. sam claflin all those people just said are good actors. yeah they'd be great they'd be great because like you know all those actors have a different edge like sam claflin's quite a dark screen presence nothing against that Stephen merchant yeah, yeah. All for the comedy. Yeah. Uh, or you just, yeah, let's just twist it. Let's say they're not going for likeness. Just someone who like, hmm, you like a real twisted version. Like get, you know, get Paul Giamatti to play me. Why not? <laughs> really like more complex and neurotic. Just, 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 just to throw a spanner Crumbling in the works. Just be like, yeah. oh, you know, actually, you know who I get to play me? I'd get the kid from The Holdovers. Oh yeah. He's Good actor. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Slightly, he's tall, gangly. But kind of, yeah, oh, slightly no, on I see that. That'd be fun. Thank Great you. question. Thank we'll you. see. We'll see who they cast. We'll see. We'll see. We'll watch. Stay yeah. tuned. We'll be talking we about it on Double Take. The so time. the news this week, guys, uh, yeah. is um, that we've been cast. We're going to be processing that information now. Um, James is going to be played <laughs> by <laughs> Steve Martin. <laughs> 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 Peter Capaldi just coming through. <laughs> they make it into a massive, like, the Netflix thing we don't like, like Jack Black and Gal Gadot. Yeah, <laughs> play us. It's The Rock, Chris Evans, <laughs> Kevin Hart. <laughs> yeah, we just thought of it differently for George, yeah, you know, right. Kevin Hart. <laughs> yeah. It's Jason Alexander. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> oh, oh, this next one is from, of course, Bevan Wright. So, Hello, Bevan, Bevan, voices in. Bevan. Uh, this is this one. Hey guys, it's Bevan here from Dublin. Um, congrats on getting to 150 episodes. It's kind of wild. Um, 
Uh, my question is, this is something that me and my family do every year, usually at New Year's, but this is like a momentous occasion. What is your pit and peak of Pulp Kitchen? Like what has been the pit and what is the peak? Um, I'd be really intrigued to hear, um, hear what they are for both of you. And yeah, keep doing what you're doing. We all love it. And best of luck. All my love. Thanks, Thanks Bevan. Bevan. Thank you so there much. Are people who can now confidently not ask me next time. So is Bevan here? Where is he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Bevan. Yeah. That Bevan guy that emails yeah, you. Yeah, Bevan guy. What's um, going on? Now they can literally put a voice to the yeah. name. The pit and the peak, James. The pit and the peak. Okay, so I'm going to say a pit is losing an episode. Oh, I was going to say it's exactly the same mortifying. Thing. That is the worst feeling in the world. For whatever reason, it might have been like, we've deleted it, just that like the sound didn't yeah. record or the, the, sort of the best case scenario is that we lose like 20 minutes. Mm. Cause that's, we can re-record that. Yeah. A, a small, oh, even though it'll be a sort of photocopy of what the original one was, but when we've had a really fun, episode yeah yeah that really kills me i totally i t- it was gonna be my same answer yeah. i remember there was a time we lost an episode we've only ever lost really at one whole about, episode like, maybe I think once. once or twice and um i was at work and you'd like you just like phone me with the bad news yeah. it's like you're calling from the hospital being like it's not gonna make it yeah i think it was the sound that had gone yeah and i just uh i remember it, like i i tried to carry on my afternoon and i no. ostensibly was going through the motions of carrying on but i no. fell really crap and i was like why yeah. is that it's like yeah it's deflated it's and, and ultimately it's like you, we want to get an episode out so we're like what is the next best practical so that you're, you're no, no, you can't mourn it you just have to go how do we get yeah. something out what are we doing how, can we record with you again this week to fix yeah. it or are we going to do a double for next week just horrible i mean there have been times that i hope you don't realize but there have been times when we've lost half an episode and we've re-recorded yeah. it straight away because yeah. we realized it in the moment as we're recording <laughs> Touch, <laughs> touching all the wood we can yeah uh, um, like as uh, I, I, both of us we, i really hate having to record this mostly blind and try and be entertaining like those things don't usually happen no. but like ideally someone would be taking care of all of this so you and i yeah. can just be talent but like I, we're always part of me constantly is always checking this is that rolling yeah uh it's, it's not fun it, it's not it's not a nice feeling that is that is definitely the lowest point you feel yeah um and now onto the peaks. peaks. That was definitely the pit. Um, I think. Well, is there, sorry, any other pits? Any other pits? I don't think so. Any other pits? I think this is like it can be like like burnout is real. Yeah, burnout. So right, like yeah. like uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't change anything that we're doing, but we're, I'm always like, how do we make this yeah. more streamlined? We would always like conscious. Yes. It's always it's always hard work. That feeling I get probably most days of like <laughs> just, just can't get to it. It's like I either trade off all of my free time, my yeah, evenings yeah. and my weekends, or I get that done. And every time I make that decision to not do that, I feel an enormous amount of guilt, as I'm sure you <laughs> that do is, as well. Yeah, absolutely. It really. And oh. it's like another week gone by with that thing I want to do not having done. And like the, un- the unrealized potential of what I know we can achieve mm. if we were to just like not sleep. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like, but which obviously would, isn't stable. No, 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 but no, like, no. Oh, if we could just edit... T- t- 20 clips a week instead of seven yeah, yeah, between yeah. us, right? We could, I do know that yeah, there's yeah, a numbers absolutely. game where we could grow. And I'm like, uh, uh, learning to be at peace with that mm. is a struggle until we get like editors or help or something. So that, that's like a real b- over, constant overburdening burnout thing I feel all the time. Yeah, like it was um, on Sunday, I was editing that Joker clip, yeah. right? So, and part of my brain was like, I got to a point, my, t- my plan was to start it and finish it on Monday. Yeah. And I got to the point where I thought, I need to, I guess I need to finish this now because it's it hot. It doesn't happen now. Yeah. And then, and then you like, I go, okay. Uh, but this is also just like, I was then going to see Megalopolis. What a great yeah. afternoon. <laughs> um, I was like, okay, I just commit. I'll just lose my Sunday. Up. It's fine. Cause I can make it back. And then um, we make it. And lucky enough, that clip got, got lots of it's views. It's on track to get a million yeah, views. Which is that's great. Actually, that's the amazing. best outcome possible. So yeah. I made it, my, my time was therefore, I look back and go, Huge. totally glad I did that. Yeah. But, we all know, all know social media. I could have spent the exact same amount of time on the thing, if not longer. Views. Could have got twenty thousand views. So it's nothing, and you yeah. just go, okay, well, I've lost my time there. So that's that's that that's can be. Thing. It's like work. These aren't major things, but like little things. You work really hard on something, and mm. it just doesn't yeah. hit or land or resonate. For the most minuscule, minute, facile yeah. reasons. And then there's clips you want to put on social media because you think they'll do well and gain new audience members and get loads of views. And there's other stuff that you go, no, this represents the best of us. Yes. And even if it doesn't have, get an audience immediately, someone could scroll on our feed and find it and enjoy it. Mm. And just, yeah, there's, um, there's loads of unedited things and projects. Uh, other things we want to do yeah, that we just totally. currently don't have the time to yeah. do. And actually we are, like, we've got some things in the pipeline that like we're excited for and we've put like 
piled on our plate. But then we, yeah. but then you've got to process them. Yeah. And you've got to edit them. You've got to put them out. And you, I mean, like, we don't know when that'll there happen. There are also so many times we'll be like at a premiere or a thing. And we get, I, I, I tend, I, I, my brain tends to go a little bit active then because I'm yeah, sort yeah, of yeah, not yeah. in my usual thing. And I'll get really inspired. I'll go, oh, George, you know what would be a cool idea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do this kind of content. We both have to be like, yeah. Not right now, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, literally, I do not have capacity to um, do that kind of, in terms of thing. The, in terms of the peak, let's talk about positive. Yeah, look, because there's genuinely are so many high points. Highs. And what's nice is that we always feel like there are potential big peaks. I mean, there's hopefully something coming in November yeah, that we're hoping cool, to do, really which is exciting. great. Um, I think there's a couple of moments. I'll take two moments, yeah. actually. I'll take two. The first one, sadly, you weren't here for this. I'm very no, sorry. I know, I know. But it's the, it's the Top Gun Maverick uh, premiere, the Royal Gala premiere. And it's, and it's because it was the... F- we got invited very last minute, yeah. but we got, got to go to the, the red carpet premiere and we have to do a little bit of influencing stuff in the morning. And at that point, we still had a, quite a f- small following. We had mm. maybe just under 10,000 followers on TikTok and um, under 1,000 followers on Instagram as well. Were we really? That's yeah, yeah, we were really, point. we were tiny compared to everyone wow. else there. And um, it was, this was in the May and we had started the podcast in the previous September. And it was the first yeah. time that stuff we had done online had converted into a real life tangible yeah. event. And um, it was also important because, as we all know, Top Gun Maverick felt like an event because yeah. post COVID, it felt like movies are back. It was, and so very sadly, James was away working, but uh, and I, I did go on my own. Actually, I didn't even have, I didn't even have a plus one. Yeah. I went all, alone on my top, which nowadays we would get a plus one. Yeah, right? you were I like, went James, on my you were <laughs> and I went along and. I didn't even have a suit. I had to whack out these old skinny black chinos that maybe, without the jacket, I looked like yeah. a member of the kooks, okay? <laughs> it looked ridiculous. And I remember walking down the carpet, but it was really great. You were missed. And I did send James yeah. a voice note after to explain the event. Like that was a really nice feeling. And also I got recognized by a lister on the carpet. Nice. And I was just like, oh, this is like real. Yeah. We're doing something real here, converts. That was great. And uh, the second high was, uh, uh, I mean, the lots of lovely highs. Lots of lovely pigs, but just being selective. At the pub quiz this year, on the uh, second second night, uh, there's a there's a guy who came emailed in last week called Jack who came on his own and joined a team and came one. And I sat chatting to him afterwards, and you know he he was talking about how much he loved the show, which is very generous, very kind words. Mm. And he said, you know what, I just I really feel like you guys have made me fall in love with cinema again. Yeah, but, people say it in emails as well. And which is really yeah, nice. and whenever you guys say that, but particularly in that moment at the quiz, being told that in person, it really meant a lot actually. And it kind of crystallized everything. And you know, like giving up my job this year and focusing on this, it made me feel like I, I felt like I was on the right track and I'm doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. And also that like, this kind of doing this kind of draws on a lot of my interests and my skills. And I just, that meant a huge amount. And I felt great. I was beaming afterwards. So, yeah. um, but lots of other, and all the peaks also guys are all because exactly. of you guys. Yeah. You really, you really do make it possible. So thank you. I'd say that first quiz, all the quizzes have been brilliant. Yeah. The first quiz is obviously the first time we got like a hundred people in a room. Yeah. And it was like wonderfully overwhelming in mm. the best way. And I was like, oh my God, this is a hundred people. Well, it's some friends and family, but like people I don't know who listen to our show. Mm. Some of whom I could, st- I, I heard their name and then I was like, I know who you are. Yeah. And just genuinely getting complimented and reassured for something that we'd worked really hard on and real people wanted to come and see us. What, see us was really, really cool. Mm. And then also like friends and family being there and supporting it and yeah. seeing it. And I think like crossing a hundred eps was really big. Yeah, that, that was like big. a really big moment of like triple digits. Yeah. We've been doing this for two years. It's not like one of those podcasts that just starts and ends. Um, yeah. And then there's just quite a few uh, experiences we get to get where we've mm. really pinched ourselves and been like, this is amazing that yeah. we've got to do this. Like when we went to the Crown season five yeah. premiere at Theatre Royal Drury Lane, that was a huge mm. event, yeah. easily in the hundreds of thousands of pounds for just a night of, of, of press and uh, we, were, the we had the best seats in the house anytime to be honest we get given a treatment where someone acknowledges us when we come in and we get taken through yeah, and i'm like oh seats, this yeah. is so strange because we're being like acknowledged as yeah. someone of interest which obviously we're not it's yeah. just like for the thing we hold and i was like yeah this is kind of crazy yeah and, and actually, getting dressed up and going to that event and capturing it and similarly like you know the honestly this has been quite a bizarre thing but like being recognized is actually a, a nice yeah. thing. And First it, time I got recognized. Yeah, awesome. it's mad. And yeah. actually this year it's been, I want to say on average, 
especially over the summer, it was like one to two times a week. Yeah. And, and, it, and, that's, and they've all been lovely. And if you're listening, one of the people that's come up and said hello, lovely Please of you. Do. They're like, really so nice. kind of you. And like, that is also quite bizarre because we're not famous people. We, are, we just do and, this thing. And, and like, like, we go about our day not expecting, yeah. I don't, have that, ver- I don't yeah. have that idea in my head that someone's going to tap me and be like, I listen to your thing. Like I really genuinely yeah. do. So every time it happens, it like snaps me out of my own little world. Yeah. I'm like, oh God, of course, oh, thank you so much. But it makes our day. It really does it, make our day. And that, my favorite one, the first time it ever happened to me, I was out with like five oh, of my friends, yeah. Italia, uh, in Brixton. And this, I'm literally like just hanging out on the dance floor holding a drink and this girl taps me. And she's like, she's like t- talking to me in my ear and she's like, oh my God, you're, you're James from Pulp, from Pulp Kitchen. I listened to your show. And I, I genuinely, genuinely thought my friends were trying to humble me <laughs> because I had like the narcissist one with yeah. the podcast. And, she, and I was like, I don't believe it. And she's like, no, no, I do. I was like, that's mad. That's never yeah. happened. And she was like referencing the show. And I was like, shit. No, I ha- crazy. I mean, I've, if you're, if I've had, yeah, it's a great experience when it happens. It's my really favorite good. was this year when I, I bumped into some old work colleagues. Yeah. I had a very nice chat with them. I said, how are you doing? They're like, yeah, how are things do you? It's great. And whilst I was talking to them, someone interrupted and said, excuse me, sorry, mate, just want to say, I love your videos, love your stuff. Yeah, and it's great. And I was yeah, like, yeah. that almost looks like a faked setup. Yeah. Like I paid that guy to come over. Yeah. But I was like, your timing? Perfect. Is, when I'm at Glastonbury, and like, I don't count them as being recognized, but when you get smushed into a, into a, into a crowd and people are coming in different ways, yeah. and I'll just be standing there and some girl will be like, it's that guy, he does the videos. And then before I can even acknowledge him, he's yeah. walked past. I'm just like, that's a weird thing that, that happens. Uh, and also, you know what I enjoy is that when you and I are like stuck waiting at some sort of like premiere experience or like at the Deadpool and Wolverine first 30 minutes, huge event, like yeah, huge yeah, marketing yeah. event, we're just watching Martin Kemp DJ. And like me and you were just, we will just rip into the whole situation and do like a running commentary of how ridiculous yeah, it is. Yeah. It was like, it's inherently so much fun. It's yeah. like a PR obligation, but so much fun that we get to do it. So yeah. those are like always great, great highs. The highs vastly exceed the- uh, Oh, they make it worthwhile. Well. Absolutely. So thank you, Ben. Uh, and just that. seeing numbers go up as well every month and seeing yeah. like the show grow, people's emails, I'd say is always, is always a great mm. one. Uh, okay, so this next one is from- Shreya. Hello, James and George, George and James. This is Shreya from Bangalore, India. Um, It's my second time sending something into the podcast, so this is very exciting. I am very curious to hear what you guys thought about Saturday Night. I watched the movie recently, and I have to say I was quite underwhelmed. I didn't find it very funny, and I thought for a movie that's building up tension to a historical moment, it kind of felt flat. Um, But yeah, curious to know what you guys thought. I also have two games for you, I guess. Um, It's related to the title games that you guys do, and here are two movie titles. And these are the translated versions from Tamil, which is my mother tongue, to English. The first is Killing Machine. And the second one is Hunt and Play. I'd love to hear your guesses and I will be sure to email what the answers are um, next week. Have a great day. So Killing Machine, we both just saw Terminator, Terminator. most likely, and then Hunt and Play. Is it the, um, is it that movie Ready or Not with Adam Brody with the woman, the bride, and she's played with, I don't think you've seen it, but like no. it, that's, that's quite good, is it that? Hunt and Play, could be that. Oh, and you've put your answers in. So Terminator, yes. Oh, great, Hunt yeah. and Play is Fast and Furious. Really? Yeah. Wow. So there you go, Hunt and Play. Hunt and Play. Hunt, Hunt. and Play. I guess this sort of, so that's called Hunt and Play Tokyo Drift. <laughs> hunt and play to hunt to play <laughs> the hunted and the played That's do so they like evolve it played f- and hunted <laughs> anyway to answer your question uh, so Saturday Night is uh, yeah. the new Jason Reitman movie about the first ever episode of mm. Saturday Night Live which is Saturday Night Live which is celebrating its 50th anniversary here Saturday Night is out in the UK in January the end of January um, obviously it's already had a release in the US yeah. to coincide with the 50th anniversary um I have already have a feeling that it's going to be a much more resonant film in the US because Saturday Night Live is such a bigger institution. It's never institution. Really been a thing of us growing up, but never like, been I've a... only discovered it since I was on YouTube like, yeah. looking at clips. And I have a very sort of like 
bitter, like the on and off again relationship with it. I feel like yeah. it's like some of it's not great. But, I think there's, there's moments where the sketches oh, yeah. will really hit. When something really lands, really, yeah. it's great. And it's nice in a way that there is an institution that's just kept yeah. going and it's bred the alum, the generations. Is, yeah. yeah, the alumni is, is fantastic. And like they'll do a 50th show. They bring back all the, all the yeah. main talent from it. My thing though that it reminds me of is that one of my biggest pet peeves or like, not even a pet peeve, but something that I find really like eye-rollingly dull mm. is what I call the valorization of comedy or stand-up comedy. But, uh, or is, is when comedians sit around and Jerry. very sincerely talk about how oh, you, excellent oh, he used to fucking yeah. slay yeah. Bo Burnham right. and, it's, into and it's like it's, it, I have to it's very specific to America I don't yeah. see comics in the U- UK doing that no um, and it's I know kids in glass houses here like we you know we sit and we talk about film yeah. like like whatever but it's the way that people go like oh my god yeah the comedy store man they killed and it's something inaccessible from you. it was like you had yeah. to be there moment and that people today you won't get it because you weren't there bro. Like, we were just slay you know we, we've chatted before about like celebrities shattering their illusion of celebrities by going on like hot ones yeah. and things like that, but or you know twenty one questions, whatever. Uh, I have the same thing with 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 that with comedians. I'm like, you've missed the point of being funny. You're you you sat around talking about how great the comedy store was thirty years ago. Not funny at all. It yeah. really, and and um you know Mike Babiglia, who's a com- comedian I like and is a is, you know filmmaker and writer. He has this podcast as well. I try to listen to some of it, but oh my god, it's just a lot of sitting around going, yeah, see. I love that bit you did. Now that bit works because you broke down and it plays what the audience said. Mm. Oh man, that's so good. Have you played Chicago? Have you played? I was there with Mark Maron recently. You know Bill Burr, right? And I just, and I'm just like, this is not, you've not missed insane. what comedy is. Yeah. It's, and I, I, I worry, getting back to Saturday night, that's going to be a similar thing of like, I'm, crazy. I'm not trying to. I'm never ever trying to diminish the craft that goes into making stand-up comedy. I, I love it. I'm I sure love it's a great comedy, story of like kids but it's, taking but it's over this TV. kind of like um, putting it on a pedestal and, and, and overemphasizing it as an art form. Not that it isn't that, but it completely actually negates the whole point of that art form right. and, and, and and makes it seem really unfunny. So well, we haven't seen the film, so but we, we haven't seen course... the film, and I will. I am looking forward to seeing yeah. it because the cast is great. It is great. Um, thank you very much for the email. Well, this next one is from Mark. Mark sends in his voice note and says the following. Hello, boys. Mark here. Long-time Discorder, first-time voice recorder. My question is, and forgive me if you've dealt with this before, um, are there any films that if someone claimed them as their favourite would make you think of them a little bit differently? Classic example is that we all appreciate Pulp Fiction and Fight Club as good films, classics. But if someone claims them as their favourite, it uh, makes me think just a little bit differently about them. I guess you could call it a movie ick, but that's up for you to decide. Love the show. Cheers. Okay, this is delicate because obviously we can't (laughs) ask this question without offending somebody. I would say... If you were to, I would answer that one of my favorite films is Pulp Fiction, actually, and I would stand right, yeah. by that. Yeah. Fight Club, I think, is slightly different. I, I, yeah. I, but um, Avatar. If someone yeah. tells you that their favorite yeah. film is Avatar, and I'm like, okay, I've heard that before, though. I've it doesn't mean I don't say. rate it. It doesn't yeah. mean I don't hold it, but I kind of go, okay. Although their most uh, the film they're looking forward to the most is Avatar Three. Mm. It's like that Come Fly with Me sketch with about Lucas, <laughs> literally, so, literally yeah. that guy. <laughs> Uh, it's like, I, too. I haven't seen it yet, but I just know it's going to be Do you remember sick. what I, I don't know, I've probably told this story before. When I worked at the cinema, we all had to put our favorite movies under our names, right? And this yeah. kid I was working with, he was like 17. He, his favorite movie, his favorite movie of all time was Two Guns, <laughs> starring <laughs> Denzel that. Washington and Mark Wahlberg. And I was like, what? <laughs> he was like, oh yeah, I just love it. It's a great movie. And I'm like, but... Your favorite film. It came out three years Someone ago. Told me cheaper by the dozen. I'm like, if you say so, man. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you you're wrong. Someone did say cheaper by the dozen, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheaper by the dozen, and I'm like, wow. Usually, I yeah. hear like Jurassic Park. But even or... that's like a niche cut. It's yeah, like, it's, guess... it's almost like oh, so unexpected. If someone said to me Justice League, oh, yeah, take a big step back. But like, similarly, if they said The Dark Knight, it's like that's objectively a, a brilliant film. Mm. 
that it's almost like it's too easy to claim as a yeah. big film. It's like someone who really in, is interested would take that and evolve their taste beyond that to mm. something to call their favorite film. I actually, it's your favorite superhero film. I think I have a, uh, a, a TikTok uh, image thread that I would like to read to you that's mm. about the evolution of um, film taste and how, and how it develops. But yeah, like for so many people, so many young people, I think, what Infinity War and Endgame built to might be like the most exciting thing. And it yeah. was, it really, yeah. really is. For people who are like starting their film journey, like if you if you were five when Iron Man 1 came out yeah. and what, how many years later, eight years later, nine years later, you were like 14, 15, yeah. older. That was like, that will probably must have been so exciting to have grown up with mm. those in your, in your house. But I know what I mean, it's just the bigger the film, it's like that film has been delivered to you. Like yeah. you've not had to sort of go out and find, I, I, do you like that film because it's based on your own taste or is it because it's been presented to you? But um, I think the shorter we answer that question, the better. So <laughs> no, those are my answers. <laughs> Stay tuned for your Avatar 3 reviews for the next couple of years. But guys, those are all the voice notes we received. I absolutely love yeah, That was great listening fun. to those. Thank it's you so much. It's always just nice to reflect on the show. Uh, as always, if you wanted to send in your reviews, your thoughts, your questions, your concerns, you can do by emailing them in to hello at popkitchenpodcast.com. Please do send in your reviews of the films that we're covering recently because there are quite a lot of them. And if you have the chance to see the films that aren't out yet and you want to send in a review, please do and we'll include it in the episode because I really like when we get to put a, a fan review mm. in an episode. So last week we reviewed Megalopolis. Well, not last week. It was uh, this, this week. week. We reviewed Megalopolis, Rebel Ridge, and A Different Man. Uh, please go check that out. Mm -hmm. And James, I think we should also talk about some things that are coming up in the calendar, yeah. shouldn't we? Let's do it. It's our 150th episode, guys. So we should announce something which is very exciting, which is, of course, two more Pulp Kitchen pub quiz days. Christmas pub quiz. Coming this December on Monday the 2nd and Monday the 9th of December in London. It's the same venue as we held the summer one as if you came to that. Mm -hmm. Christmas quiz. I mean... Around about Christmas, but the rest of the rounds will just be about films yeah, as, yeah. as normal. But a cozy Christmassy vibe, indeed. You can study Christmas, but please, it's for it's for, it's for all sorts of weird and wonderful rounds. Yes, exactly. So um, look out for those dates. Tickets go on sale if you are a well if you are a Patreon subscriber mm -hmm. or an exclusive subscriber. Tickets will go on sale on Monday, the fourteenth of October. That's only a few days away. And if you are a general member of the public and are just a, a regular listener, tickets will go on sale on October the 16th, Wednesday, October the 16th. We'd love to have you guys come along. It is a December, so I know it's, a, uh, it's on a Monday. It's, the, it's just the, you know, the time we were able to book with the venue. Uh, so patrons, look out for uh, a link in the Patreon feed with a password to enter the event and get your tickets early. And for everyone else, that will go public and it'll be all good. Yeah, we, uh, we're conscious of it being on a Monday, but also this time because of availability, we've actually split it a week apart. Whereas yeah. last time we did a Wednesday and a Thursday, I think. So this time we are Monday and man Monday. So if chances you can't make that week, hopefully you can make the week afterwards. Uh, but yeah, it's very hard to get venues in London mm. in that month right before Christmas. But the venue we did it at last time I thought was brilliant uh, and worked really well for our quiz. So same again. Yeah. Very exciting. Already jotting down fun questions in my notes. Yeah, me too. Based yeah. on things. We're really excited. And like, you know, we talked about it earlier on the show about how it's been a real high for us, like meeting people. Like, yeah. We can't wait to do it again. We always want it to be like a regular thing. And just like film trivia is such a core part of the enjoyment of what we do yeah. and just getting to tease you guys with the trivia as well and just like and if you haven't been to a quiz me and George hosting ourselves and we genuinely come around to every single table yes. we shake the hands and hopefully meet every single one it's always just a massive pleasure to meet everyone and uh, yeah I thought our last quiz was hard but the guys that won one of the nights they did extremely they well did. they were insane if they come again they are probably oh, going to win again so crew up yeah, uh, I'd say a good advice is to have a, a, a variety of tastes between you. Yes, you need a... someone on your team who, whose favorite film is Avatar. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and someone whose favorite film is the Seventh Seal. Okay, like, in the third act of Avatar Two. <laughs> yeah, Jake Sully says <laughs> it's getting real deep cut. Um, so uh, that's the thing we're proud. So we'll look be, out for the links. We'll be that. trailing it, of course, in the in the um, coming weeks. And um, just a big thank you to the past three years. Thank you, James. Wait, well it's, been it's been pleasure. We've done it. And stay tuned for more interesting shenanigans. Hopefully yeah. something else we'd like to do live in the coming months that yeah. we think could be really special. We're not going to announce it yet, but we would love to do something with you guys that isn't just a quiz. It's a collab album with Pitbull. Yeah. So we're, fe we're featuring. <laughs> Feet. Pub. Yeah. Feet Pop Kitchen. Feet Pop Kitchen. <laughs> um, anyway, guys, have a great Take week. Care. Thank you Check so out much. For, uh, and just thank you if you've been listening for 150 yeah, episodes. If you, oh my God. Oh my thank God. You. Thank you so much. And we, oh, 
share share the show with friends if you think they'd enjoy it. It means the world to us. Um, and and yeah, as ever, a big shout out to our producers, Aiden and Finn. And of course, I think it's time we gave a shout out, as ever, our monthly shout out, mm. a monthly thank you to our Patreon VIPs. So yes, a big thank you to our producers, Aiden and Finn, and our monthly thank you to our VIPs, Francesca Brown, Ray Love Jr., Kieran Cleaves, Laura, James, Matthew Wakeman, Shane, Stephen, Harry Watley, and Eden Phillips. Thank you so much. And guys, if you wanted to thank support you. us, of course, the best place to do that is on Patreon, where we do an entire exclusive show for you guys called Double Take. It's a new show where we react to newsy bits, rumors, castings, predictions, we talk about the streamers, the directions. Mm. It's all really good fun. It's a completely different show. If you want more of us that's a little bit different, I urge you to go and check that out. Uh, and hopefully you'd enjoy it. And if you sign up now, you get all of the episodes of Double Take. We've done what, like 15 now? 16? Uh, I think 19 to 20. Oh, no, oh my God, 19 to 20. So you get 20 episodes. And some people have. They like to join the Patreon. Like, oh, I'm now binging double take love it yeah so get involved get binging Take thank care. you so much guys thank appreciate you. it bye bye, bye.